Welcome back, guys. Uh, now we start solving linear optimization problems. Basic idea here is to come up with solutions for linear optimization problems. First of all, let's 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 start like uh, discussing on graph how to graph constraints and how to compute the solution to vertices of those constraints. Actually, whenever we have access to a linear objective function and linear constraints, it doesn't matter if it's a maximization or minimization problems, problem, if possible, try to graph the constraints and try to graph your problem and solve it by using the vortices. You're gonna see that the vortices contain actually the solution. Okay, let's start. Consider you have this problem. So our problem is, suppose you've got 240 acres of land and you want to grow either corn or either oats or both, of course, in different proportions. Consider you make like $40 an acre if you grow corn and 30 if you grow oats. Okay. And now suppose, just consider those numbers here, 40 an acre and 30 an acre. This, uh, this brings like some sort of profit formula or objective function for us. If I make 40 times the number of acres plus 30 times the number of acres of oats, I will have some sort of profit to compute from a problem. Now suppose we've got some constraints. First of all, corn takes like two hours of labor, of, of labor per acre. So you need to work like two hours an acre if you are growing corn and one hour an acre if you are growing oats. Okay? Those somehow define weights you've got in terms of labor. And consider this, you only have, or you want, you only, you, you want at most uh, to consume like 320 hours of labor. That's the number of hours you've got. Suppose you, you, you just hired like company and that's the number of hours the company owes you. So you can invest at most like 320 hours of labor. The question that stays is um, how many acres of each should you grow to maximize profit? The profit is not difficult to define. You can observe that my function profit is $40 every acre of corn. And I will define the number of acres as X for corn and Y for oats. So $30 an acre of oats and oats being defined as Y. So this will be my objective function. Of course, if I sum up both, I will have my profit. As you guys can see, uh, this is a linear, a linear obje objective function in terms of X and a linear objective function in terms of Y. In terms of the constraints, of course, I cannot grow a negative number of acres. So X must be greater than or equal to zero and Y as well. Otherwise, we would be accepting a negative number of acres, what makes like, no sense in our scenario. In terms of other constraints, we've got a constraint which, we, which is defined in terms of the number of acres I have we have. Let's say we've got, of course, in this problem, we defined the number of acres we have is 240 acres. So if I sum up the number of acres of corn plus the number of acres we are investing in oats, that has to be smaller than or equal to 240. Could be equal, of course, but it can be small as well. Okay. And there is an additional constraint. This additional constraint tells me I have this number of available hours 
of labor. 320 hours of labor are available. And I know I invest two hours per acre of corn and one hour per acre of oats. And that number of hours in total has to be smaller than or equal to 320. It cannot surpass that limit. Otherwise, this constraint, this constraint wouldn't be satisfying. Okay. At this point, we have our problem formulated. So the best to do at this point is to graph it. So we are starting with this. Consider X is here as our number of, a number of acres of corn and Y as the number of acres of oats over here. Okay. The first constraint we have is this, the number of acres has to be smaller than or equal to 240 acres. Though, of course, if I sum up the number of acres I'm investing in, in corn and plus the number of acres I'm investing in oats, that, sh that should be, that must be actually smaller than or equal to 240. How can I graph this constraint? To graph it, just make it equals to 240 and solve it. Solve it for x equals 0 and for y equals 0. And separate, of course. So you make this equals to 0, and if x is 0, y would be 240. So I have a first coordinate. Every time x is 0, y is 240. On the opposite, if I make y equals to 0, my x will be 240, as you can see here. If my x is 240, my y will be 0. What can I do now? I can just graph it like this. This is the, the graph of my first constraint. You guys can see every time here is 0, here is 240, 240, and 0. That's my first constraint. But after having, after defining a constraint, I need to select if my feasible set, my feasible region lies on this side or on this half space over here, given this is a linear constraint, okay? Just take a point over here, like 0, 0. If I apply this 0, 0 over here, 0 plus 0 will be smaller than or equal to 140. So, of course, this side of my hyper hyperplane satisfies my constraint, and this other side does not satisfy it. So, from this, I can tell you, okay, that's the side of my space, of my half space, that satisfies my constraint. You know what's quite common to do now is to bring this, uh, this illustrative vector. It's just an, an illustration to tell, me, to tell me, okay, on this side of this hyperplane, I satisfy this constraint. We also have this second constraint. 2x plus y is smaller than or equal to 320. I must solve it for the equality as well. If I make it equals to 320, of course, if my y is 0, my x will be 160, as you can see here. And if my x is 0, my y will be 320, 320 as shown here. From this, I have two points, therefore, I can just bring the plot of my constraint as shown here. And again, I need to verify if this side of my space, this half space over here, satisfies this constraint or this half. Of course, if I take again 0, 0, I know it will be satisfied. So, I will have an illustrative vector pointing down like this. Yeah, like that. You know what is really nice now? I need to consider a, a positive number of acres or maybe equal to zero. So my x has to be equal to zero or greater than zero. And my y also, either it is equal uh, to zero or greater than zero. As you might see, now I must overlap all the constraints. If I overlap all those, just, just use like a, a, you could just 
have like a, a piece of a piece of paper with a pencil and you could just start like drawing the region that must be satisfied i must satisfy everything that's below this linear constraint everything that's also below this i need to satisfy something that's greater than zero for x greater than zero for y that means this region intersects or overlaps all the constraints we have that's a feasible set that's a feasible region for my problem you know what's interesting here i have a space with the the variables for my problem which are x and y but i don't have my objective function being plotted here to plot my objective function i need a third axis here why let me open the new plot here because i should plot something like this spl plots in three in three dimensions okay so i need to plot 40 x plus 30 y that's what i need to plot like this that's the surface of my objective function as you can see here is x and here is y you know what i think we could do something like this just define the range for x from zero to would be like to 240 and y from also 0 to 240 just for uh, like illustration purposes and of course i could set like my x label will be called like uppercase x and my y label will have a label for it which is uppercase y and i will plot my my objective function this is my objective function which is linear as you can see a linear surface this is y and this is x take a look zero zero happens here zero for x and zero for y happens here exactly at this point of course i will have some sort of shape over here with the constraints doing something like this okay and of course at, the, at some point over here which is this point I have a possible solution some, somehow here. Another vertex happens here. Another vertex happens here. Of course, this is 160 for X, which is over here. 240 for Y, which is over here. Just imagine this as our, our Y. Yeah, it's like here, okay. And somehow I need to maximize my profit. If I want to maximize, take a look uh, at the gradient of this surface. If I go to zero, I'm, am I maximizing? If I start with x zero and y zero, take a look at the, the sort of slope we have. If I am trying to maximize, I need to go to this side, maybe to that side in terms of y, maybe to this side in terms of x, or maybe a composition of both, like going to this side over here if you come up with this just imagine all those constraints are being traced or plotted in terms of this plane down here this plane with x and y of course this will be a solution this is the same as 240 here in terms of y and of course we have 160 in terms of x which is in here and projecting that will provide this result for me and of course we have another point here which lies around this point maybe what should i do i should every time i have a linear object a linear uh, optimization problem of course i just need to project my constraints onto my surface that's the same as considering this point projected into my surface, which is here, my objective function, this point, and also this point over here that I still don't know what is the value for x and what is the value for y. This point over here, this vertex, okay? Of course, I need to find it. Take a look. To find that point, it's not difficult. This point over here is a possible solution as well. So we have 0, 0 as one possible solution. We have 160 and 0. We have 0 and 240. And we have another point here. 
This point is the one for which both constraints are equal, one to the other. If I make this constraint equals to this constraint, I will have x equals to 80 and y equals to 160. That's my point over here. If I make one equals to the other. Of course, at this point, I have four possible or candidate solutions. 0, 0 to apply in my profit, aka my objective function, which is here. Okay, that's my P. That's my function P. I have another possibility, 160 and 0. Another one, 0, 240. And 80, 160. If I apply, that's kind of easy, right? I just need to open like some, some R over here and I apply in 4 times X plus 30 times Y. That's my objective. Consider my X is 0 and my Y is 0. That's my point zero, 0 and my profit is 0. If my X is 160, my profit would be $6,400. If I consider x equals 0 and y equals to 240, I would make 7,200. And if I divide my land and consider 80 acres of corn and 160 acres of oats, I will make the most. I will make 80,000 dollars, okay? That's the best value. That's actually the solution I have for this point over here. Again, that's the same as going back here in my objective function and taking for this x 80 and for this y 160 and projecting into my surface. That will be some point around this. Okay? Just imagine now. My solution, the best solution, or the solution that I make more, that make the most out of my land, is if I grow 80 acres of corn and 160 acres of oats. That's the solution for, for my linear problem. What happens if I try to solve another linear optimization problem? Let's try it. I just give you now this problem, read it, and try to solve it. Just Pause the video over here and try to solve it by yourself. Then you verify my solution. Okay? Okay, so let's go for the solution. Suppose a rancher who wants to mix two types of food for his or her cattle. Okay? Consider we have two brands. Brand, brand X and brand Y. Brand X has 15 grams of protein. 10 grams of fat and it costs uh, 80 cents per unit. Unit could be like a, a pound, could be a kilo, could be whatever you decide. Okay. And brand Y costs like, uh, yeah, actually this better, better call like um, kilos in this case, because we're considering grams, sorry. And brand Y has 20 grams of protein, 5 grams of fat per unit and it costs 50 cents per unit. Consider each serving is required, is required to have at least 60 grams of protein and 30 grams of fat. Those refer to constraints, as you might observe. Observe also the cost. The cost is related to my objective function. And take a look at the number of grams we've got. 15, 10 grams, 20, 5 grams. And take a look at the question, how much of each type of food should be used to minimize the cost to this particular rancher? He or she wants to have each serving with this, satisfying this constraint, at least, take a look at this word, which is really, really important, at least, at least going for the solution 
we are going to call x as the number of units of brands, brand x and y as the number of units of brand y and this is our cost function it's a linear cost function in terms of x and in terms of y it is the cost per unit 80 cents of, of x and 50 cents of y that's the price we pay per unit as we discussed before as given in our problem what about the constraints i cannot mix a negative number of units so my x and y must be greater than or equal to zero to be equal to zero because i assume just i can use just one of the brains and that's not a big deal that's not a big problem again <clears throat> let's go for the first protein related constraint the first protein related constraint we have is the number of grains we have for brand x which is 15 plus 20 for the the second brand which is brand y must be greater than or equal to 60 grams per serving in terms of fat we've got 10 grams of fat considering brand x and 5 considering brand y and if we sum up both that needs to be at least remember that that word at least means greater than or equal to 30 grams of fat and here at least means greater than or equal to 60 grams of protein and yes we have all constraints now we can graph this problem and find the feasible region and of course the final solution if we solve this for the equality this constraint we are going to find of course this linear function okay uh, and of course it's going to intercept um, x at the point 4, 0 for y, and 0 for x and 3 for y. That's my first constraint. It's kind of easy. If I consider an, uh, an amount of x equals to 0 and y also equals to 0, can I be, could I be greater than or equal to 60? Impossible. So the side of my half space that's important, it's the upper side of this constraint over here. Take a look at my illustration vector, okay? So it's on this side my solution. If I draw the second solution, the second constraint, sorry, which is in here, I can find this linear constraint. And again, consider like zero, zero, a point over here and another point over here. Which of those two points will satisfy this constraint to be greater than or equal to 30? Any point you take, it's, it has to be equal to this, this constraint or greater than. Okay, so it lies on this side. Of course, x and y must be greater than or equal to 0. If I overlap all those constraints, what is my space considering all feasible solutions aka the feasible region or feasible um, subspace or feasible set if you prefer take a look it is in here it lies in here it's all this region of course here i couldn't draw draw it but it goes to infinity in terms of y and it goes to infinity in terms of x okay that's my feasible region how many um, vertices I have to verify from my problem? This, verte this vertex, uh, vertex over here, this vertex, and this other vertex. If I consider any other vertex that's around here on X, that, which is greater than like this point over here, like for X equals 5 and Y equals 0 or any other, they can also satisfy my problem. You can try it later. The same happens if you consider x equals 0 and y equals 6 or 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 and go into the infinity. Those will satisfy as well. However, the cost will be higher. Take a look. This is the space considering my input variables. 
I also have this point to verify. So I have 40, which is, which is in here, and 06, which is in here. And I have another point here, which is defined when my two constraints are equal to one another. That's exactly when x is equal to 2.4 and y equals to 1.2. That's my possible solution over here. If I solve for all three points, all three critical points, I will have my cost equals to 3.2. Here, for 0.6, my cost equals to 3. And here, for 2.4, 1.2, which is exactly here, I have 2.52 as my cost. If I am trying to minimize the cost, the best solution I have is, so, uh, is mix 2.4 units of brand X with 1.2 units of brand Y. You are going to have the minimal amount of fat and protein per serving, and at the same time, you're going to pay the less as possible, the, the smallest number value in this case for your uh, serving can to, to feed your cattle, of course. That's quite interesting. Now, please try to solve this problem. Consider this, just pause the video and then you watch this YouTube video later, okay? Bring your doubts to our Google Meet. You know we've got every Friday, Friday at Google Meet, from 10 to 12 um, and I'll be, I'll be just available for you guys, okay? AM, okay, in the morning. And then another problem that I want you guys to solve and the solution is in here, okay? That's quite important. And a third problem, just pause the video again and solve it and see the solution later, okay? That's all for now, see you in the next video.